This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Well, hello there, friends. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of CWK Live every Tuesday night. Oh, at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm your host, Dan They're delighted to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. Now I know why it looks so dark. I didn't have the lights on. As it turns out, that makes a difference, and that is not a metaphor. Great to see all of you. Yes, it is, in fact, the penultimate episode of Ahsoka airs tonight in one hour, so that means we're going to have our CWK Ahsoka pre-show. We've got a lot of great stuff to talk about with you tonight. Let's bring in our friends. Hello, Mary. Happy Tuesday, Tano Tuesday to you. Great to see you, Mary. Terry is with us. Hello, Terry. Great to have you, my friend. I mentioned Ben's great comment. Happy penultimate episode day. That's right. And then Brian, uh, who has clearly been listening to Coffee with Kenobi, says, By Balin's beard, this is the Tuesday you are looking for. Great to see you, Brian. Carrie is here. Carrie, hello, Carrie. She is driving, so she cannot comment, but super excited for tonight. Well, Carrie, uh, definitely keep those eyes on the wheel, my friend. We are happy to chat with you and uh, have you join us tonight. So that's so fun. Yes, uh, one more week before the Ahsoka series finale, which is f- fantastic. Emphasis on the ultimate. Ben says, yes, ultimate is correct. We're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk, of course about this incredible episode, Ahsoka Far, Far Away. There's a lot to talk about with Far, Far Away. I'm definitely looking forward to chatting about it with you. We've got some Star Wars news, and I've got a bit of an unboxing for you as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. Yes, okay, we've got some fun news for you. Uh, A lot of of news can be found at coffeewithkenobi.com, but I've picked a couple of highlights for you. First, uh, this was announced um, a little over a week ago, but I haven't talked about it on the show, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, Disney 100, the exhibition, is coming to Chicago, Illinois. That is quite near my neck of the woods. And there's going to be a lot of great stuff. It opens in November, but it's uh, it's going to be amazing. There's going to be a lot of Disney props and some incredible interactive experiences. Of course, merchandise. It's going to be really amazing. There is a there's of course a Star Wars component. They have the lightsaber from that Ray uses in the Rise of Skywalker that will be there on display, which is super cool. They've got great, fun little interactive elements as well. And there's, of course, a picture of people getting there and a shot with Goofy, which is so fun. David is here. Hello, David. He says, hello, CWK family. Sorry about missing the last few Tuesdays. No problem, buddy. Life gets busy, and we appreciate you being here with us this evening. Other fun things for this exhibition? Oh, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of great displays, great photo opportunities, and I cannot wait to check it out. I cannot wait to see it for sure. And it looks like it's going to be amazing. I think there'll be much more about this. Again, this is coming to Chicago. Speaking of exciting, if you're in the San Francisco area, November 24th to the 26th, you can meet the legendary Mark Hamill. Of course, I don't have to tell you who Mark Hamill is. He's Luke Skywalker, one of the most famous heroes in the history of film and certainly in science fiction. And then, of course, he is the voice of the the voice of the iconic Joker in Batman, the animated series. He's just awesome. He hasn't done a lot of conventions. I haven't done any conventions for a really long time. So this is really cool that he's going to be at this thing. So if you're in the area, be sure to check him out. Let's go to merchandise. So this week was Hasbro PulseCon last week. And there were a number of amazing things, including, and I put this first, uh, the Rex helmet yes you can get the rex helmet when i looked at this on uh, hasbropulse.com i'm sorry on hasbro's website it was already gone now uh, there are links on coffee with kenobi there is 
Anytime you use an Amazon link on Coffee with Kenobi, it helps out the show, so I certainly appreciate that. But be sure to check that out regularly. Hopefully they will get more in stock because that is a beautiful helmet, a fine addition to your collection. Speaking of fine additions to your collection, we've got the Black Series. We've got Shin Hati, who is going to be a Black Series figure, and it was just a matter of time, really. So it's great to have this actually announced. You, she is available for pre-order as well on coffeewithkenobi.com. There is a picture of her outside of the box, fully posed. Again, they Hasbro does such a great job posing these figures. They always make them look so cool. Love it. Now, this is the one that's that's the showstopper to me. This is Balen Skull, of course. It's a terrific likeness of Ray Stevenson. Here he is outside of the box. I mean, that's cool, right? And with the armor. And uh, to me, the lightsaber looks a lot more red than orange. So maybe they will adjust that. I don't know. I'll, I'll ask Casper about that at some point. But a terrific, terrific looking figure. Then we've got some vintage stuff. Hello, David. I'm sure Aaron knows about this, but I'm thrilled about this. This is Chopper on the vintage card series. Of course, uh, that is three and three quarter inch figure. And that is Chopper. He comes with a couple of accessories, a great looking package. So that's awesome. We've also got a director Orson Krennic who is, of course, from Rogue One. He is what you call an instigator, I think it's fair to say. And there's going to be a vintage collection carded figure of him from Rogue One. Dave says, Chop. I know Chop is cool. Speaking of cool, here is uh, Jedi Knight Revan from Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes and the vintage collection card, a really nice-looking figure with some stunning artwork. And then you've got HK47, also from Galaxy of Heroes. And neither of these figures, to my knowledge, have ever come out um, on card in vintage collection line like this. So really, really nice sculpts. Hasbro is just amazing. And then I don't have the picture of him on card, but Hugh Yang, this is a vintage collection, as you can tell by the logo on the bottom right, of Hugh Yang coming with some accessories. A terrific looking figure. Looks like he is highly posable as well. So some fun stuff, but that's not it. I've got a bit of um, bit of show and tell for you. I haven't posted this online yet, but Hasbro was kind enough to send me this free gift full of Ahsoka goodies, and I'm going to show you what we got here first. Uh, Star Wars Mission Fleet. You've got Ahsoka's T6 Jedi Shuttle. That's probably a better look at it right there. Complete with Ahsoka Tano and the shuttle. These are really fun um, for new collectors or younger collectors, but any collector, really. So there's that. Mary says she needs Chop and Hugh Yang. I know, so cool. Let's look at some vintage collection stuff. I have got a deluxe Sabine Wren here. And Sabine comes with a Loath Cat, and she's got her armor. Here's the back. Shows you all the accessories. This is one I'm actually going to open. Because when I get the ghost, I'm not going to open those figures that are carded because of the mural card back. But now I don't have to worry about it because I can just open up Sabine here. Again, available on Amazon and Hasbro's website. Now, let's look at a couple of fun things for uh, for the kiddos. Uh, Darren says, gee, kind of a large shuttle. I know, and I need to work up a better angle to show these things here. Uh, also from Mission Fleet, this is from uh, Book of Boba Fett, but it is Grogu, Ahsoka, Luke Skywalker, and R2-D2. And of course it comes with those little space frogs. Uh, just great, very posable, and a lot of fun for the kids to play with. Terry says he loves new vintage series figures. They're really quite nice, aren't they? Let's talk Black Series. Here's Ahsoka. Now, this is the Ahsoka from Ahsoka. And I don't know if you can see the likeness here. I think you can. But it's really, I mean, that looks like Rosario Dawson to me as Ahsoka Tano. It's good to see them back with uh, these newer, uh, the plastic again. But I think it's a different kind of plastic. So that's really amazing. One I am going to keep my hands on. And then we've got Sabine Wren right here. Uh, this is a Black Series Sabine Wren from the Ahsoka series, complete with her 
Mandalorian helmet and the lightsaber, Ezra's lightsaber. So pretty cool. Mary says, define kids. Um, anybody who has a spirit for joy. So I think that's all of us. We also have this guy who we got to see again last week, Ezra Bridger. This is him from Lothal when he is clean shaven. But there is Ezra in the package. And finally, we have Morgan Elsbeth. Morgan Elsbeth from Ahsoka. Another really great likeness, too. Apologize for the glare there. But that's not all. What else do we have? And by the way, some of these are going to be a part of a Coffee with Kenobi giveaway. More on that in a minute. I also have um, the Galactic Action Ahsoka Tano figure. And I believe she lights up. Trust your instincts. Pretty sweet. And it's the, of course, it's Ahsoka chatting. Uh, David says, I thought the Black Series was getting away from clear plastic. Oh, thank you. She's still talking. From clear plastic as part of a packaging. They did for a while, but now it's back. And I think there's um, a different kind of plastic. I'm not entirely sure. Liberty says that she needs the Ezra figure. It is cool. Uh, Darren uh, is a fan of this figure. This is, again, the... The Ahsoka that is from the Galactic Action Fleet. I would guess she's probably a little over 12 inches tall. I don't know. And she is posable too, which I didn't expect. We also have uh, the Lightsaber Forge Ahsoka Lightsaber. And that is great because they're customizable and you can combine them with lots of other lightsabers too. Mason was very excited about this one. And then we've got um, the Ahsoka Tano electronic mask that goes on um, over, and I, I think, let's see. Yeah, it has some it has some sound effects as well. Let's see if I can figure out how to do it. Well, oh, here we go. May the force be with you. I sense much fear in you. Pretty cool. Fun, great, just in time for Halloween, too. And then the piece de resistance. Chatterback Chopper. Chatterback Chopper has over 40 sounds. He is interactive. He responds to your voice. Uh, he's full of a lot of fun little options and surprises. I got to see him in person at Star Wars Celebration Europe a few months ago, and he is terrific. He is terrific. So look on Coffee with Kenobi's website tomorrow. I'm going to be giving away a couple of items from... This collection that Hasbro sent to me. And again, thank you, Hasbro, for sending over this free product. What an awesome blessing, and I can't wait to uh, enjoy them and really have some more fun with them. Hello, Josh. Great to see you, buddy. Uh, uh, Davis says, Aaron just got Chatterback, Chatterback Chopper in the mail. Oh, that's cool. I bet he's so excited. And Aaron agrees. Cool Chopper. He's a cool chopper. He's so cool. Uh, but speaking of cool, I know the reason you're here. Let's go ahead and jump into our top Five. Yes, that's right. We're going to go into our CWK Live Top Five. Mary says, David, of course he did. Of course he did. Yeah, he's a big Chopper fan. Uh, and then, Josh, you're welcome. Great to see you. Now we're going to do about your top five moments from Ahsoka. Far, far away. A terrific episode each week. Again, gets better and better and better and better. I'm looking forward to seeing what you all come up with. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I'll give you my number five. Number five for me is Turtle Power, the Nodi. The Naughty, Nodi. They are new figures. Uh, new figures, new. Oh, I'm sure they will be figures. New characters that Sabine meets, and clearly Ezra has befriended them or become a part of their tribe. They're adorable, especially the baby Nodi's. And I had to indicate them or put them on here because it was just a fun, a fun little extra addition to the Star Wars universe. Terry's number five is a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. What a great way to start that episode. Talk about a jaw-dropping moment. That is an excellent way to start off your list, Terry King. Mary's number five is Hugh Yang starting his story. Uh, very, very similar to what Terry just said. 
By the way, I want to say this before I forget. As you know, this is the week, the last week of the Halcyon. Um, uh, there was, we're going to do a lot of stuff about it for sure on Coffee with Kenobi. We're going to go um, finish up Ahsoka. But we're going to give the, the Halcyon its due because it's just such a wonderful thing. Uh, for those of you who get to experience the Galactic Star Cruiser this week or have ever gotten to, I'm I'm very happy that you're getting to experience it. I think it's one of the most wonderful things I've ever experienced as a Star Wars fan. And I hope we will get to see it in some way, shape, or form in the future. Okay, back to business here. Brian's Five, the amazing, the super amazing cinematic reveal of the Chimera. Yes, super amazing and cinematic are all accurate depictions of this experience. Ben's Five, Sabine holding her own against the thieves. The fighting choreography has been noticeably top-notch this series. There is, there is a different feel to it, isn't there? That Star Wars always, is always great with fighting chore- choreography, but this feels different. Now, that solo fight that Sabine has with those marauders, amazing. Davis Five, the Night Troopers, curious to learn what they are all about. I don't know, but they are creepy. Like, I can't imagine getting one of those figures, because, I mean, assuming they will have a Night figures, a Night Troopers figure, because they are creepy, I think. Um, Liberty's Five, the Howlers, they will make another great figure. I hope they put those out. Yes, I, I do too. I mean, this this whole episode is full of a lot of great opportunity for some really cool figures and play sets and things to come out. Josh says, Stormtrooper armor, great detail. It's very, very good detail. I'll give you a second. You know, there's quite a few of you on right now. Uh, so if you think of something you want to add, go ahead. Gar is here. Hello, Gar. What's up, man? It says, Turtle Power, go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Exactly. That's why I picked it as my number five. Uh, I don't think they're as quite as effective in a battle as Leonardo, Raphael, Michelangelo, Donatello, but who knows? We shall see. All right, I will go ahead and jump into number four. If you have a number five you would like to add later, that is absolutely fine. Just go ahead and click it, and then I will be sure to comment. Uh, Josh, to say one of the great mothers is Claudia Black from Farscape. Well, how about that? I did not realize that. My number four uh is similar brian's it's the thrawn entrance not only him walking out but just the the majesty and the pomp of and the imposing nature that is thrawn him coming out in his star destroyer it was pretty scary stuff you know this guy means business and if you were more familiar with thrawn and this was your entrance into seeing him you know this guy is scary he is he, he frustrates me he's He's so powerful and dangerous. Like he's one of those uh, villains that when you see him, you think, oh no, how are we going to get out of this? Because he's not a joke. He's not to be trifled with. And I thought they did a great job of demonstrating that here. Number four from Mary, the hyperspace scenes were gorgeous. Yes, and and very different because they're going even faster. They're beautifully done. Terry's four is Thrawn's arrival on the Chimera. Uh, Yes, I agree. Um, Carrie says Nodi equals Ewoks to me. Yeah, they, they, they did remind me of the Ewoks for sure. And just as far as that cute factor goes. Ben's for a, a long time ago in a galaxy. Uh, I love that this line was canonized. But I also love the folklore theme of the episode. That is one of my favorite things about the episode. The storytelling aspect of it. Liberty's for those night troopers. They have an eerie feel. I feel they are the undead and maybe have some night sister magic at work. Ooh. I guess that's possible. Josh is for Thrawn's intro music. Yeah, that was cool. Kevin Kiner continues to be just amazing. David's for Night Scissors on Peridia. Learning their role and communicating with Morgan Elsbeth, how they looked, and spilling out Sabine as having Jedi scent. That was cool. Carrie's number four is the Howler. Love the incorporation of this creature similar to a loath wolf lore. That's true. Carrie, I hope that you are... Someone is using your phone while you're driving. We don't want anything to happen to you. Be careful out there, my friend. Uh, let's go to number three. Let's go to number three. Listen to me being like the parent over here. Three, I put Balin's backstory hint. So my, the T got cut off here. Uh, but the, the backstory of Balin is pretty cool. Yeah, pretty profound. I think... Um, the fact that we didn't get a lot, but we did get enough of nuggets to see that he is in there for different reasons. He has loyalty, which we knew. But he is still someone 
that's got some, it's got a real chip on his shoulder. There's some trauma there probably. And hopefully we'll get to see about it. But I like how it's, the information has trickled out to us. So there's more to enjoy and more to figure out. But it's not spelled out completely. And that to me is good storytelling. Uh, Brian's for Shin, Shin's curiosity about Balin's recollection on the Jedi Order. And I am in that camp as well. Carrie is home now. Whew. Okay, I am glad. I am glad. Terry's three, Balin's conversations with Shin, hinting at his goal and purpose. Oh, interesting. Yeah, exactly. And very similar to mine, Terry, you and I are very like-minded this evening, which is always, I, I will take that for sure, because you're a smart fellow. So that's cool. And it's very interesting what's going to happen here. Maybe. I think it will be, though. Liberty's three, I love the Nodi and Ezra's living situation. They are so adorable. And I imagine Ezra's connection with other creatures helped him stay alive in this new place. I think that's true as well. Carrie three is seeing Ezra with the same sass and love for Sabine. It was it was really spot on, wasn't it? Mary three, the Howler and the Nodi were both great additions to the Star Wars line of creatures. So obvious that Filoni was an apprentice to George Lucas. It really, really shines here, doesn't it, Mary? David three, the arrival of the Chimera, a new and a different way for a Star Destroyer to make an impressive entrance, and boy was it ever. Ben three. Ezra's slow reveal and the way the camera panned to reveal him. I'm anticipating a tough conversation when Ezra learns how Sabine found him. Probably. Probably. As you know, I'm not a big speculator. Not that that was much of speculation, uh, of course. But yeah, I'm looking forward to the episode uh, coming out here in about 38 minutes or so. Boy, is that fun. Boy, is that fun. All right, let's go to number two. Number two for me is Ezra's bearded appearance. So we talked about, um, uh, <laughs> we talked about Balin's beard that was mentioned earlier, but no, this is um, that Brian mentioned. Uh, seeing Ezra like that, I talked about this a lot on Coffee with Kenobi last week. But the beard is such a a classic archetype of mythology, like wise mentors or just. Jedi coming of age and growing beards and it's sort of an unofficial thing, but it just makes me happy. And, and I'm not gonna, I'm, I would be dishonest and disingenuous if I didn't say that every year when I grow a beard and it's going to happen pretty soon. I, I think of that because I just think it's cool. I mean, I remember as a kid, um, some of my favorite teachers had beards or some of my favorite characters in Star Wars have beards. I just think they're just sort of an inherent wisdom that's implied not from me, per se. I mean just from fictional characters and mentor figures. And also it just shows that Ezra's been there a long time. I mean, it's been a really long time. It's been years and years and years. So I think it's cool that he looks like that and he's growing up. So, Plus the voice was spot on. I, w I was so happy with the actor who plays Ezra Bridger. His name is escaping me right now, so I apologize. All right, let's go back here. Terry's 2 is Thrawn's commanding performance, and it's so cool that it's the same actor, you know, Lars Mikkelsen, as the one who voices him in Rebels. You can tell. Ben says, quick, great quick math in the 38 minutes. I know. I'm as surprised as anyone, Ben. Believe me. I'm not a math guy, but I certainly appreciate it. Mary's 2, the reveal of the Chimera, and then Thrawn's dramatic entrance, which was powerful and cinematic. Darren's 3, the way the Stormtroopers looked, and the Chimera itself... Great stuff. Carried number two. Intense entrance of Thrawn and hearing his amazing voice in live action. Wish his makeup could have been more intense, though. So the makeup I thought was fine. I think his hair looked a little bit off. But, I mean, overall, the voice, um, boy, boy, does that make up for it. Darren's number two surprise that Thrawn revealed before the season finale. I'm glad that they, I know what you mean. I did That did cross my mind. But I'm glad that they did now because it means we get a couple episodes to sort of crank this in. Liberties 2, I'm fascinated by Balin's objective here. Can't wait for the reveal of whatever he's seeking. It's going to be fun. Hope we find out soon. Brian's 2, Balin's loyalty to his training of Shin is something more than a Jedi. And that, I'm glad you put that out there. You quoted it for us. Yes, something more than a Jedi. So what does that mean for him? It'll be fun to see. Ezra, Josh points out that Ezra looks like his dad, which is spot on. I had not considered that, but that is correct. Gar did not like the beard at first, but then it grew on me. Oh, I, I think, knowing you the way I do, I think that was a fun pun. Well done. Well done. Even if it's not, you're still getting applause. 
Ben's uh, next one is Balin's backstory and vision for power. I admire his desire to end the power shifting he sees, but I fear what he has planned. Yeah, I get that. I definitely get that. David's number two, Sabine's battle with bandits on the way to find Ezra. The way she uses her blasters and lightsaber was really cool. Yes, I mean, that was a great, great sequence. I'm surprised I didn't put that in my top five, but I love that battle sequence that Sabine had. It was terrific. In fact, in retrospect, if I had a magic marker, I would erase Thrawn Entrance and put Sabine, Sabine's uh, solo fight in there. Either way, super cool. But I mean, we'll just say it's a tie. Just for, imagine, if you will, that it's right there like that. Josh, since I had to get home, uh, number three, Sabine and the Howler acting like a puppy. And number two, I know I could count on you. What, what a great line from Ezra. Iman Esfandi. Yes, thank you, Ben. Thank you. I remember not typing that now. I totally remember that. Let's go to number one. Number one for me from far, far away is far, far away. As soon as that happened at the beginning, I said to Mason, that's going to be my number one. And then I said, well, maybe something will replace it, but I doubt it. Look, it hits all the right notes for me. It's about story. It's about myth. It's about folklore. It's about legend. It's stories about stories. I love stories. I've dedicated my life to telling stories, writing about stories, and teaching stories. And I love it. I love it so much. And the fact that they put far a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away is a part of this Star Wars cinematic experience. I was smiling from ear to ear. I mean, it was just wonderful. It was just the greatest thing. Um, it also had some depths and layers to how these galaxies work. I still don't think, I don't think and I said this on Coffee with Kenobi this week, I still don't think uh, it means anything about how it's shifted the canon around. I think that's, no, I just don't, I don't buy that. That doesn't make any sense. I think there's more to it. I think there's much more to it. And I think it's brilliant and loving. And I'm just very, very grateful for it. It was just wonderful. And the fact that Hugh Yang was telling the story because he's been around for so long, like longer than we've seen stories about Star Wars because he's he predates the Clone Wars by a very long time. It was just magical to me. All right. Let's see what we got here. Number one for Carrie. Chimera entrance and all its tattered, gilded glory. Got goosebumps. The music was off the hook. It was great. It was so great. They are in something this season I expected Thrawn to be revealed, but never Ezra. Not sure why I didn't. Oh, that's cool. It was a great surprise. Terry's number one is similar line uh, that was mentioned before. I knew I could count on you. Terrific stuff. Mary's number one, the Ezra slow reveal. Of course, he has been living with small, unique creatures. Exactly. Love that they made sure his two facial scratches were there. That was a cool twist, wasn't it? And Mason was so excited to see Ezra's eyes pop, too, just like in the series. David's one, Thrawn's incredible entrance. The chanting of the night troopers made it even more impressive and eerie. Eerie is correct. Very much so. Very, very dark and uh, disturbing. Macabre. Liberty's one, the first one is the best. I outright yelled when Hugh Yang said, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. That was such a great intro. Yes, it was. And I'm going to include that at the beginning of tomorrow's Coffee with Kenobi, or Thursday's Coffee with Kenobi 2. Brian's one, Hugh Yang, starting the story a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. We we're pumping our fists about getting those iconic words in the show. It really is like a dream come true. It's like, I love when Star Wars gives you things you never know that you wanted or needed. And then you get it, you're like, how did I, how did I enjoy Star Wars without this? So, totally. Levery's next one, number one, is Ezra's facial scratches. Um, the show shows the attention to detail is making this a great show. That's awesome. And Liberty, I love your picture, too. I know that's from Star Wars Celebration uh, Europe as well. Number one for Ben, Thrawn is back. His entrance, his army, his unconventional calculated approach. He's a perfect antagonist. I love Lars Mikkelsen in the Sherlock series. He's delivering the same creepy performance in Star Wars. Is he in, is he in Sherlock? Who was he in Sherlock? I don't even remember. I love that series. It's the best. You have to remind me of that. Number one for Josh Sabine. This was her story. That's cool and beautifully stated. And Liberty, Mary agrees with you very much. And I do too. I do too. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for talking about this with me. I mean, Far, Far Away is a great episode. Hopefully you got a chance to listen to it on Coffee with Kenobi this week. We had a great time recording it, Ross and Jen and I. But next week, of course, 
We're going to talk about part seven of Ahsoka, which comes out in exactly 30 minutes from the time of this recording. Man, oh man, oh man. Well, I mean, I don't know about you, but actually we'll get to that in a minute. Let's go ahead and jump into Ask Dan Z. All right, so how do you enjoy Ahsoka? I may have talked about this before, but here's what I did. I I go upstairs, I get Mason, and we get a little snack ready. Usually it's cereal or popcorn or something, get our drinks. Sometimes it's hot tea because, you know, you don't want coffee before bed. Although, honestly, it probably wouldn't bother me. When it's time for me to sleep, I just crash no matter what. But most people, I don't recommend that. And we sit there and we watch it. And then, honestly... And then we just sit there with our mouths wide open the whole time, besides an occasional high five or a cheer. And then we usually watch again back, back to back, because that's how much fun it is, as you know. As you know, Ben says season three, episode three, he plays Charles Magnuson, media magnate that uses blackmail. Oh, yes. Yes, I do remember that, Ben. Thank you. Boy, I want to watch that series again. I want to interview at Celebration. Brian says Dave Filoni was asked where Ezra was, and he said far, far away. <laughs> Little did we know that was literally, he's literally, literally telling us one of the titles for an episode of Silk. I remember that. That's brilliant. What a Dave thing. Uh, Gar says, if a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away it equals once upon a time. Oh, yeah. That's a great point. I never thought about that, Gar. I wonder what the Star Wars version of And They Live Happily Ever After is. I don't know. We'll find out, I hope. Mary says, Ross and Jen keep killing it every week on CWK. I agree. I love I love being on with them. It's it's so much fun. Josh wants to know who else ordered the Sabine FX lightsaber. I was gonna put that on, but the files that Hasbro sent me, the pictures were massive, and I just couldn't get it to shrink down in time. But yeah, that's a great looking lightsaber. Uh, Brian was gonna invite you to to our group watch, but Disney Plus got rid of group watch last week. Oh dang! Well, that would have been fun. I didn't even realize that. Uh, someone named Darth Maul is joining us. Well, that's exciting. Uh, he says, I wonder if Thrawn will be in Mando Season 4. Uh, if he is, I hope it's only a few episodes. I think someone other than Dim will be the one to ultimately go and, and defeat him. You know, that would be cool, uh, Darth Maul. I love saying that. I'm not a big speculator because for me, uh, speculation without regulation equals constipation. But again, that's just for me. So I don't know. But I hope this big, massive universe becomes even more expansive. And we know that Dave Filoni is making a Mandoverse movie. So I'm optimistic. Very, very optimistic. This is happy early birthday to you, Dan, on September 30th. Well, thank you, David. I'm, I appreciate you uh, very much. Thanks for saying that. Yeah, I'm going to uh, have a birthday on Saturday. Looking forward to that and celebrating with my wife and my friends. It's going to be a blast. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of traveling uh, just for the weekend. I'm really looking forward to that uh, for sure. Let's hope tonight that I get an early birthday present, uh, and Ahsoka's awesome. I have a feeling it's going to be, because every single week has been absolutely amazing. Terry says, loving what Dave Filoni is crafting up with each Disney series. Looking forward to his movie. Oh, man. Can you imagine? Carrie says, happy early birthday. Thank you, buddy. Uh, appreciate that. And Brian says, this is the birthday you're looking for on Saturday. Thank you, Brian. You're always good at that stuff. Look, uh, before we forget... Let's throw this up here. Don't forget summer 2025, the Disney Wish. Our great friend Tyler Pompa is actually on the ship right now. He posted some pictures in the cafe of the Hyperspace Lounge. It looks amazing. Cannot wait to go there and, and uh, share our toast with all of you. I think that would be so awesome. So, yes, Coffee with Kenobi and Mouse Fan Travel are going in the summer of 2025 on the Disney Wish. Find out more at coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel and... I've said this many times, but just in case you weren't aware, it's there's we don't have dates yet because Disney has not released dates for cruises in the summer of 2025. But as soon as they do, Becky and I will chat and figure it out, and I will let you know as soon as possible so you can hopefully join us. Anybody remember that Project Necromancer was mentioned by the Shadow Council in Mando? Oh, I do remember that now. I do remember that. That's a good call, Liberty. Uh, ben says, enjoy celebrating your birthday. I know you love doing that. I do. I love birthdays. I, I am someone who absolutely loves birthdays. 
I mean, as I always say, birthdays are better than the alternative. Plus, it's just fun to just celebrate life. And what a great life we have, you know, enjoying Star Wars, being a part of this incredible coffee with Kenobi's uh, community. It means so much to me every week that you will spend time out of your busy schedules and lives and join me live on CWK. You can, of course, see the show on Facebook or YouTube, and then you can hear the audio version of the of the show later on the podcast feeds. Mary says, have a fantastic birthday weekend. Good journey to Buite. Yes, to Buite to you. I'll toast you with my Coke Zero to Buite, which is what they say on the Halcyon when they are toasting. So good. So good. Well, hey, everybody. Enjoy the show. It'll be coming out here in less than 20... I'm not doing the math anymore. I don't want to push my luck, Ben. Uh, looking forward to chatting about it with you. And don't forget, right after the show, you can comment spoiler-free in the CWK Cafe, which is our Facebook group. And then on Saturday, spoilers um, are going to be out there, so you can post those on Saturday as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Enjoy Ahsoka. Thanks for joining me on this Ahsoka pre-show. And remember, this is the podcast you're looking for. Enjoy Ahsoka tonight, everybody. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for.